Hello and good afternoon to all of you. I hope all of you are doing well and all of you are in good health. In today's class, we will create distinction between uniprocessor system and multiprocessor system taking into account various qualitative parameters. Now, uniprocessor system, as the name says, is a system where there is only one processor. Whereas multiprocess system is a system where there are more than one processors. So here in case of uniprocess system, there is a single processor that accesses the memory in order to perform operation. Whereas in case of multiprocess system, there are multiple processors in a given system and they'll access a shared memory in order to perform operation. So this is the, this is the common understanding of uh, uniprocess system and multiprocess system. Now let us try to create a distinction between uniprocess system and multiprocess system taking into account various qualitative parameters. Now the qualitative parameters that are taken into account here are performance, reliability, throughput, scheduling, scalability, cost, use of operating system, memory, response time and load balancing. So I thought these are some of the prominent quality parameters based on which these two systems should be judged. There can be many other quality parameters that may be taken into account. Now to start with performance, so since multiprocess system have more than one processors, so these processors are capable of collectively performing business at a faster speed. So performance of multiprocess system is very high due to presence of multiple processors. Likewise, performance of a uniprocess system is considerably low due to the presence of only one processor. So here, in case of multiprocessing system or multiprocessor system, what you can do is you can initiate multiple activities, assign it to different processors and get the job done. Whereas in case of uniprocess system, since processor is capable of executing only one task in a given unit of time, so all the tasks are mandatorily to be as arranged in a sequential manner. Now the next important qualitative parameter is reliability. Now since in case of multiprocess system there are more than one processors, even if a processor is unable to perform operation or a desired operation that the other processors can be assigned the same job and the work can be achieved. So in case of multiprocess system, even if a, a processor is not capable of performing uh, the, the operation, collectively or collaboratively other processors can work together in order to achieve the task. So multiprocess system exhibits very high reliability. But in case of uniprocess system, so since there is only one uh, processor in case of uniprocess system, reliability of such system is very low because if a processor fails to perform an activity, then the overall system is considered to be fake. So this is an important, uh, important thing that you need to understand in case of multiprocess system since there are multiple processors, so collaboratively multiple processors can perform action whereas in case of uniprocess uni system, if a processor fails to perform an action, then the system is considered to be fake. Now the next important parameter based on which these two types of systems can be distinguished is throughput. Now throughput basically means the ability of the system to process programs per unit time or set of instructions per unit time. So throughput is the, is the actual output of the system uh, measured in unit time. So multiprocess system has a very high throughput or it has a greater throughput compared to that of uniprocess system because of uh, the presence of multiple processors. Likewise, uniprocess system has a very low throughput because since it is capable of executing jobs only in a sequential manner, so it will require considerable amount of time to complete the task. So throughput is very low compared to that of multiprocess system. Now scheduling. Now in case of multiple uh, multiprocessor system, since there are many processors uh, in, a, in a given computer architecture, 
A very efficient algorithm is required in order to schedule the various job amidst the various processor. So here, job scheduling is very difficult. So you need to have a very efficient job scheduling algorithm put in place in order to schedule the jobs amidst the various processes that are there in the computer system. So, so job scheduling is uh, uh, pretty difficult compared to that of unit process system. Now, in case of unit process system, job scheduling is very easy. So, since there is only one processor, all the jobs are to be arranged in sequence, and these jobs are to be executed in sequence one after the other. So, for example, as in case of batch processing system. Now, the next important qualitative uh, parameter is scalability. Now, multiprocess systems are highly scalable. So, you can incorporate more coprocessors into the system and enhance the ability of the system. Now, uniprocess systems are not scalable. So, since, there is, uh, since the, the, the architecture calls for a presence of only one processor, so you cannot add coprocessors or make the system interact with other systems to collectively realize a, a common objective. So, scalability is, uh, so multiprocess systems are highly scalable, whereas uniprocess systems are not scalable at all. Now, cost. Multiprocess systems, since uh, it has more than one processor, it will be comparatively expensive uh, to that of a uniprocess system because whenever you talk about a system architecture having multiple processors, you need to have a very able computational algorithm that is capable of managing uh, the various processors. It should be capable of um, having a system architecture in terms of communication channels that are capable of coordinating action between uh, various processes. So the entire architecture becomes complex in case of multiprocess systems. So uh, multiprocess systems are very expensive. Now, uniprocess systems are, are relatively inexpensive or relatively cheaper. Now, operating system. So, here in case of multiprocessing uh, system, you require a complex operating system because you need a very efficient algorithm to optimally utilize all the, uh, the processes that are there in the computer architecture. Not only that, you need to have a very good scheduling algorithm. You need to have a very good uh, communication protocol established. So, you need a very complex operating system in order to manage a multiprocess system. Likewise, you need a very simple operating system to manage a uniprocess system. Now, memory. In case of multiprocessing system, since there are many processors to, uh, uh, that are capable of performing operations, so the main memory requirement is very large in case of uh, multiprocess system. Likewise, in case of uniprocess system, so since there is only one processor, the main memory requirement is very uh, considerably low. It's uh, considerably low. Now, response time. So, a multiprocess system has a very low response time. So, response time basically means the time that's required from the, uh, the uh, in between the request sent to the, the response received. So that's called as response time. So a multiprocess system has a very low response time. Whereas in case of uh, low response time in terms of quantum value. So so here it, uh, it's capable of uh, giving response to the request with, within a shorter period of time. Now likewise, response time in case of uniprocess system is a little bit high because since the jobs are executed in a sequential manner, since the jobs are executed in sequential manner, so the, the time by which the request is sent and the time by which the response is received may be considerably higher compared to that of multiprocess system. So since the jobs are sequentially executed in case of uniprocess system, so response time is considerably high. Now load balancing. Now, since multiprocess system uh, has, has in its architecture many processors, so you need a very efficient load balancing procedure or a complex load balancing procedure. So, load balancing basically refers to a mechanism of evenly utilizing all the processors in order to enhance the overall performance of the system. So, whenever we talk about multiprocessing multiprocessor system, so there has to be a very efficient mechanism for balancing load amidst the various processor. So, it, it requires a very complex uh, a load balancing procedure. Now, likewise, in case of uniprocess system, since the jobs are executed in a sequential manner, you don't need uh, need a uh, need a, a complex uh, load balancing algorithm. 
because there is a single proce uh, single processor and the jobs are arranged in a sequential manner and uh, they exhausted one uh, one after the other so now these these are some of the uh, the prominent parameters across which you can quali uh, qualitatively uh, distinguish um, a uniprocessor and multiprocessor so in order to have a quantitative uh, uh, distinction between these two so you need to take an example um, of system and then you can uh, uh, make a quantitative uh, distinction between them but as of now uh, this qualitative difference more than uh, what is required so here in this case uh, in in this case again I'm uh, repeating it we have made a, a qualitative distinction between a uh, uniprocess system and a, a multiprocess system taking into account performance reliability throughput scheduling scalability cost operating system memory response time and load balancing as some of the prominent parameters so here there's a typo error in case of response time so in case of uniprocess system the response time is very large in case of multiprocess system the uh, response time is very low now moving ahead now let us try to identify some of the important operating system rules whatever we have learned till now so operating system uh, is responsible for memory management operating system is responsible for uh, file system management operating system is responsible for process management operating system is responsible for IO subsystem management and operating system has other host of operating system services so we will uh, discuss this set of roles that operating system performs in subsequent slide so as of now in abstraction you just need to remember that an operating system performs memory management file system management process management io system management subsystem management and it performs several other operating system services now to start with let us discuss memory management now what is memory management all about so memory management is a mechanism where operating system creates an abstraction of the underlying complexities that complexities that are involved in storing data in different types of memory that are there in a computer system now as we all know there are different types of uh, memory in a computer system uh, we have discussed in the previous class so some of the notable types of computer memory are CPU registers uh, you have cache you have uh, main memory you have uh, solid state drive you have hard disk you have magnetic tape you have optical drive so there are different types of memory that may be associated with the computer system now memory management basically refers to a technique that is adhered to by an operating system in order to efficiently utilize all of these memory systems that are present in a computer system and uh, create a layer of abstraction from the user for not knowing the underlying hardware complexities that are involved in the memory system so this is very much important so that is what memory management is all about so many memory management basically refers to how an operating system allows a user to use computational memory without having to know about the underlying hardware complexity now what does operating system do so operating system creates a uniform logical view of information storage by abstracting physical property to logical storage units so this is very much important so operating system is capable of creating a uniform logical view of information storage by abstracting physical properties to logical storage units so for an example uh, in a in the hard drive of computer systems are logically partitioned into different drives so you must have often observed you have um, um, drive by a certain set of nomenclature so it's a drive a drive b drive c so what are these these are basically logical partitions of a single partition or a single hard drive right so operating system allows you to do that Op operating system allows you to create logical views of the physical memory now this is one of the key uh, key uh, management role that operating system performs now the second aspect is now storage is dependent on the type of devices with varying properties such as 
access speed, capacity, data transfer rate, access mode. So this we have discussed in the past as well. So we can and see the operating system allows us to store data at different mediums depending on our requirement. So what kind of access time we require or access speed we require uh, depending on uh, the data transfer rate, access mode, capacity and so on and so forth. So uh, operating system is capable of creating uniform logical representation of all the memory, um, of all the, uh, the physical memory that is there without having user worry about uh, the underlying hardware complexities that are involved with different memory types and uh, storage uh, so depending on the requirement of the user uh, the data and the instruction can be placed in different locations with different access speed different capacity different transfer rate and access mode so this is uh, in a nutshell what memory management is all about or how operating system manages memory now likewise you have file system management now file system management basically refers to how an operating system facilitates the user to organize the files and folders that are there so we as for an example in case of windows express edition uh, the operating system allows us to organize files in a hierarchical representation, so files and folders and directories in a hierarchical tree-like representation. So every operating system has, it, has its own mechanism or has its own technique deployed for uh, efficiently handling uh, files that are there in the computer system. So file system management basically tries to address to that. How efficiently an org operating system allows uh, the user to organize uh, their records. Now, as we know, in uh, in, in 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 the physical um, uh, drive, everything is stored alike. So, or everything is stored in forms of zeros and ones. But in order to uh, facilitate ease of use, uh, the the files and the, the files folders and directories are organized into logical groups. Uh, logical hierarchical groups. So that is what file system management is all about. So files are usually organized into directories. So directories are mechanisms of grouping files or mechanism of group, uh, grouping related files. So that's that's what what's called. So files are usually organized into directories. Now with associated with every uh, directory or files what you can have is you can have access control. So access control on most of the system to determine who can access what. So associated with each and every files you can have an access mode specified to allow or to deny people to access that particular file. Now the activities that are there uh, associated with the file system management are creation, deletion of uh, creation and deletion of files and directories associating primitives with the the uh, the file system to manipulate files and directories mapping of file system into the secondary storage and uh, creating a backup of the the directories that are created by the user so these are the the basic provisions uh, that operating system um, allows us to do for managing file systems efficiently now next one is process management now just see operating system allows us to execute processes as we have learned in the previous class operating system allows us to perform tasks right from creating to uh, preparing initiating allocating resources and its management scheduling controlling coordinating handling exceptions execution and termination of business processes so now just see these are the host of activities that are involved in executing a business process. So every business process that is to be executed is to be created, it has to be prepared, it has to be initiated, execution has to be initiated, resources are to be allocated, the, uh, the, the business process are to be scheduled to the processor, it has to be controlled, it has to be coordinated, it has to, uh, if there are exceptions, these are to be handled, these processes are to be executed, and eventually when the process execution is over, then you need to terminate that particular process. So process management basically talks about all of these sub-activities that operating system allows us to do in relation to the business processes so operating system is responsible for following activities in connection with the process management so it allows us to create 
and delete both user and system processes. So this is very much important. An operating system allows us to create and delete both user and system processes. So there are there may be many user initiated processes and there may be many system initiated processes. So operating system enables both creation and deletion of user and system initiated processes. Now next is suspension and res uh, resuming of processes. Now in situation if a processor is executing a, a business process meanwhile a very high priority process comes in and high priority a high priority process comes in so now what you need to do is you need to make the process that is currently being executed to go into a suspension state and then allow the processor to execute the high priority task once the high priority task is executed completely, then what we need to do is we need to resume uh, the suspended process. So this is the way how suspension and, res um, and resuming of processes basically work. So operating system should allow for suspension and res resuming of processes. Now, third one is uh, providing mechanism for process synchronization. So how uh, the processes work in uh, the, the business processes work in synchronization in order to uh, realize a common objective. So this is also uh, the role of the operating system. Now, uh, provide a mechanism for process communication. So this is very much important. So operating system should be enabled. Uh, should be should should enable inter-process communication where process communication is established through either shared memory or remote procedure invocation or remote procedure call or remote method call and so on and so forth. So different processes in a computer system may interact with each other in order to realize the business, right? So operating systems should be able to allow these processes to interact with each other in order to perform operation. So this is one of the key responsibility of an operating system. Now, eventually, uh, process, uh, uh, an operating system should provide a mechanism for deadlock handling. Now, we will discuss deadlock in greater detail in the subsequent class, but as of now, just remember deadlock basically refers to a situation where the execution of processes uh, goes into a, uh, to a, to a, to a standing mode where neither of the processes are able to execute because of um, uh, because of uh, um, of resource constraint or processor constraint, uh, they, they can be different types of constraints. So uh, every operating system should provide an efficient mechanism for handling deadlock. So these are some of the qualitative measures uh, based on which we judge the uh, the uh, the quality of the operating system. So in today's class, what we have learned about is we have learned about. We have learned about what is uniprocess system, we have learned about what is multiprocess system, and then we have created a distinction between a uniprocess system and a multiprocess system, taking into account various uh, uh, qualitative measures. The qualitative measures are performance, reliability, throughput, scheduling, scalability, cost, uh, use of operating system, memory, response time, and load balancing. Then further, we moved on to various roles that are uh, performed by operating system in a computer system, which includes memory management, uh, file system management, process management, I/O system management, and other associated operating uh, system services. Then we learned about uh, what are the uh, the roles that uh, operating system plays in order to efficiently manage memory where we have learned that uh, memory uh, the operating system is capable of creating logical representation of uh, the physical memory so that the user can efficiently use the memory in order to store programming instruction and data and uh, we also uh, talked about use of different types of memory based on uh, uh, the requirement of access time uh, capacity uh, data transfer rate and access mode and so on and so forth. Then we moved on to file system management where we learned how files are organized in, in, in a computer system and we have also learned about uh, various activities that are, that, that are associated with file system management. Then we moved on to process management where we learned about the various tasks that, that uh, the operating system performs on behalf of a business process right from creation to termination. 
And uh, uh, we also learned about some of the important uh, uh, activities related to process in that includes creation and deletion, suspension and resuming, uh, uh, process synchronization, process communication and deadlock handling. Now in the next class, we will learn about uh, the process flow uh, that's a part of process management in a greater detail. So thank you very much. Have a very nice day.